Thanks for tuning in to this edition of KB Time. I'm Kabir, your host. Uh, this week we have a lot planned. First, I've been challenged to an international rap battle, so we're going to find out what that's about. Uh, also, we're going to go over to Holy Joe's Coffee House in Akron, and this week is Worldwide Volkswagen Day. Uh, 79 years, technically, I guess, since the Volkswagen factory, uh, the cornerstone was laid in Germany. And so we're going to check out my own Volkswagen Super Beetle from 1971, and we're going to look back at the interview that I did with Elmar Cruza, who's an expert on old Volkswagens uh, here in Streetsboro, Ohio. Uh, but first, let's go and check out the rap battle. Now, uh, a lot of folks have written in to say that they Googled me, and aside from the show coming up, uh, there's a film director with the same name who has come up, and he directed a film called Love. And as any, all of you know, if I was directing a movie, it wouldn't be called Love. Also, uh, this guy is Indonesian or something. The other person with the same name as me that you can Google and find, uh, he posts up music that he has made himself. Uh, some of it is like acoustic folk. To, I don't know how you would describe it, uh, and that's fine. But he's also posted up this rap song that he made uh, that he, I think he's calling me out. I don't know. So uh, I'll maybe respond to this in a future episode. But for now, please enjoy a portion of the first part of the Kabir Bhatia rap battle. Come bring it here. I'll teach you now to do it how. Rapping is my life. Rapping is my drug and the lifestyle that I live by a skull tongue. Things that I said but beyond imagination that will hit them back with zeal and retaliation. Want to reach the top go so very I hope you enjoyed that or more accurately I hope you did not enjoy that because then it makes my job easier when I have to respond to that. I don't know how we're going to do it but we'll come up with something in the next few weeks. Uh, moving on, recently I was over at Holy Joe's Coffee House in Akron, and the owner was nice enough to spend a few minutes with me. We are at Holy Joe Coffee House in uh, Akron on Merriman Road. Cool. How long have you been here? I've been here since the first week of September. So what makes this different? from the coffee that I grind at home from the supermarket for a dollar a pound? Well, right now we're just getting into uh, roasting our own beans and everybody's really digging that. Um, our place uh, came about from, uh, I like a lot of black and white movies, so uh, end of the 50s, early 60s type uh, uh, coffee houses and that's what we went for. And so our upstairs is completely different than our downstairs. Downstairs is more like uh, your mom and dad's basement or rec room or whatever. Cool. And you have musical acts who come through here too. Yes, we have music uh, most uh, weekends. So this weekend uh, we have on Friday night and Sunday night. Well, actually Sunday afternoon. And we'd like to put them outside in the parking lot. Right. And when customers come in, what's one thing that you think, oh, I hope they try this because they're never going to get it anywhere else? Um, a lot of my fresh ground coffee. Uh, it's uh, uh, so many of our customers are really, really liking it a lot. Uh, we have a vendor that we use, and so now we're kind of phasing them out and going to our own. And our food is fantastic. And I hope, you know, that's one thing I really hope people uh, get to try is our food. My son is co owner and chef here, so he makes the best food around, I think. Don Rickles, my dream guy, and I'll see him soon, live at the Latin Casino. I think I'd better call in my reservation now. Enjoy Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles, plus Fabian and dinner, live at the Latin Casino. Call now for reservations. Welcome back to KB Time. Now, what we're going to do is take a look. You may have seen a suspiciously Herbie-esque looking Volkswagen driving around Northeast Ohio or Chicagoland. Uh, and first of all, to get something straight, the car is 46 years old. It prefers to be called Herb. Second, it is not technically a Herbie car because uh, Herbie was a hardtop and this is a convertible. Uh, thirdly, Herbie was a Volkswagen Beetle. This is a Super Beetle. Ooh. Super Beetle just means they put in a bunch of uh, improvements and whatnot for the 1971 models. Uh, they look slightly different. Uh, trained eyes can tell. 
Uh, but most people probably just figure, oh, it's pretty much the same car. Anyhow, uh, mine is a convertible. It is a 1971 Super Beetle, as I mentioned. It has an engine from 1974 because somebody wanted uh, to attempt time travel or something. Uh, but now let's have a look at uh, the little quirks, if you've never seen one or if you haven't seen one in a long time, of the Volkswagen Super Beetle. One big misnomer about these cars, at least for young people who don't know, is that the trunk is in the front. Look at that, that's all storage space. In the back there, that shelf, that's the gas tank. Uh, this mat underneath it is the spare tire. And this is where you can put stuff. Uh, if you've ever seen an original non-Super Beetle, uh, the original one that was made alongside this for many years, but prior to this uh, was the only game in town, those have the tires mounted vertically. And there's not as much room up here because that was one of the improvements, uh, or so they called it, it's still debated by people. Um, I think it's an improvement, but people still debate whether it was an improvement to put the tire flat and create more storage space because some people feel that the Super Beetle isn't uh, as pure as the original Beetle. But this one's a Super and it's got the extra space here up front. And of course the engine is in the back. These air slots on the engine lid, which is the rear of the car of course, were added in the early 70s to help the engine get more air and to cool better uh, because the engines were getting more powerful. A lot of people can identify Volkswagens, which model year they are, just by little things like this and also by little things like the taillights. This is the gauge in the car. This is the only gauge and you'll notice it's got a speedometer, it's got an odometer to show mileage of course, and it even goes in tenths, and it's got a fuel gauge. And for many years the fuel gauge didn't exist and people, there was a, had to kick over uh, an emergency valve to use the last gallon of fuel and a lot of people got very good at doing that as they were driving uh, but eventually they did install this fuel gauge. Next to that you can't really tell but the speaker for the stereo is there behind those vents. This is the radio. It actually comes on even if the radio or the car is off and uh, there's no key in the ignition, so a lot of people, I'm sure, over the years left this on without realizing it and came back to a dead battery. Uh, this is for the heater, which in these cars at this point, most of them is pretty much non-existent. The heater channels have rotted out, and uh, as the cars have gotten older, people have stopped being able to uh, really use them, and um, with a convertible especially, not that useful. Uh, headlights, of course, you pull this out. Wipers, you turn and uh, like normal, these control the heater channels. This here is just to remind people how to shift. It's supposed to be an ashtray. Mine doesn't come out, so I'm wondering if uh, maybe that was some option that got removed. These, of course, right here, hazard lights. There's actually a uh, cigarette lighter outlet here, so you can use that for power. Locking uh, glove box, which is nice because the glove box, uh, or the trunk rather, does not lock, so I have to put in away valuables. I put them there, and in here, these little uh, sort of uh, this area here has got sort of an indentation. Uh, a lot of people refer to this as a cup holder. I believe there's our models where there's an indent here for an actual cup, but still, I wouldn't want to be driving around with a cup of coffee balancing on this as I took corners. The whole dash, as you can see, has got this black cladding on it right here, and this is the material under it, the bare metal that goes under this plastic cladding. And unfortunately, the older ones had metal all the way around. This plastic is more of a safety thing, I guess, that came in later. And while it looks nice, uh, I prefer the metal look. And in many ways, actually, the uh, black cladding starts to come off and actually becomes more of a problem than possibly it is worth, unfortunately. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, this license, or this uh, steering wheel, a lot of times it was different. As you can see, this one's got a horn ring. Some of them didn't even have horns. Turn signal stock, of course, is here, but the turn signals are regular turn signals. They're not the semaphore ones. It would pop out the side. And then the last thing, the windshield. Look how close that is. Oh, it's filthy. The, the windshield here is, look how, look how close those are from the steering wheel to the windshield. This is for 1971. After this, they would make a curved windshield very quickly that was out further 
uh, f further recessed, I guess, away from you, so it wouldn't be as much of a problem. And then, of course, there is a uh, dome light, which actually still works. Uh, it's not that useful, it's not that bright, but it still, still works. If you've never bought a Volkswagen because it wasn't big enough, okay. Here's a Volkswagen that's big enough. The new VW Fastback Sedan. It seats four with more room for elbows and legs. It's pretty jazzy, too. Has an electric clock and even wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. The Fastback also has the most powerful engine we've ever made. It's air-cooled. It goes 27 miles on a gallon of gas, which is pretty good for a car that can go 84 miles per hour. Since we made a VW that's a little roomier in the inside, we decided to do the same thing on the outside. It's got a trunk up front where most cars have their motors. And in the back where most cars have their trunks, we have a... <laughs> it's a trunk. A large trunk. Our guest tonight, our first guest is uh, a renowned Volkswagen expert. expert. Please welcome Elmar Kuzo. <laughs> So first off, everyone knows your, your establishment. You've seen it with the various Volkswagens out front. How long have you had that place? It's been there a long time. Uh, my father and I bought that in 74, and then uh, started it, and then I left for a few years. But I came back in about 1980 and took it over. Okay, and you've been fixing and restoring Volkswagens ever since? Fixing Volkswagens for as long as I can remember. So why Volkswagens? Why Volkswagen Beetles? Um, I don't know. I just, I just grew up with them. My father had a shop in Cambridge and, uh, before he came over here, and I just grew up. I started working on them when I was about 10, 11 years old. Just uh, enjoyed. I, I had the knack. You either have the knack as a mechanic or you don't. You know. And clearly, you have it because I, I have it. Yeah. So we <laughs> still have it. Still have it. No, no, no. Don't say that. So. Uh, when people bring in their cars, let's say they're all air-cooled engines usually, because it's the older. I mean, you can you can do new ones, but they're usually the older ones. Well, yeah, actually, we do more of the new ones now than the old ones. But uh, and I'm the only one really left that can still do the old ones. Yeah. So how come like the number three cylinder always is just compression between the other one? <laughs> it is the furthest one away from the fan, I guess. My mom said. Is that is that accurate? Okay, we have an, we have somebody here who is testing you, a friend of yours. Uh, I had no idea what I was just saying. <laughs> No, um, good one, man. This question. So <laughs> tell me this. So and a lot of people don't realize these old Volkswagens, they didn't have a uh, radiator. They were air cooled. Right, they were simple, as simple as could be. Why is that? Uh, well, it, 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 it came from, well, of course, Porsche designed it. The Germans did it. It was car in Germany. And then after the, uh, the United States won the war, uh, we had to give the Germans something to do. So we resurrected the Volkswagen factory. Okay. People without work rebelled. So they started the factory up, and the Americans started the, uh, you know, the Volkswagen factory going right after the war, and they started building these cars that uh, Porsche designed. They're very simple, air-cooled, um, reliable, inexpensive to operate. And it's like lawnmowers. Like lawnmowers. It's big lawnmowers. But louder. Sometimes. And I understand that. And colder, too. And colder? Well, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I understand that Ford, when they were offered... They said, you can have this factory in Germany after the war. And what did they say? They didn't want it. Do you know about this? No. They said, no, what, this factory is worth two cents. They said, forget it. Ford could have had, what could have been driving Ford Beatles? Ford. But then they would have redesigned it after two years instead of right. 40 years. Because uh, do you ever get the Mexican Beatles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. From time to time, people yeah. have figured out a way to import them. They used to. They don't anymore. They don't go to Mexico anymore. There was a company in Brownsville, Texas, that used to uh, take brand new ones from Mexico and cut the center tunnel frame out that had the serial number on it and put an old one in. Oh, okay. And it would instantly be, that would be legal now. So yeah. Oh, it's not legal. Country. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you put, like, let's say, a 68 yeah. frame section into a brand new um, 2002 Beetle. Right. Then it was all of a sudden a 68. Yeah, I guess. So a lot of people don't know. And they did it. It was in 2003 or four that they stopped making them in Mexico. Right around, you know, it's around 2003, 2003, 2004. So if you go maybe not near the border or go over the border, you can still see like a brand new one down there. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so 
I'm going to show you this. Well, we'll quiz you. This is a brief quiz. Tell me, is this a beetle or a super beetle? Uh, that looks like a super beetle. Now, how can you tell? Because everyone's it's a little bit longer in the front. It's about two inches extra there. And, uh, I think it's a super beetle. Okay. So, no, I don't know. I'm really. I think it is. But it's it's a longer. The nose is just a, the, the first 71 and two super beetles that are, were two inches longer than the 73 and more than were four inches longer. So there was so there was a, a lot of there was a big controversy that these looked they said pregnant compared to the original design, right? But they're still nice. Seventy one and two super beetles. Okay, now see, I know this is seventy one. <laughs> That's amazing. The, this crappy old photograph can't tell this was seventy one because I know I had a nineteen seventy one beetle into Google. That's I mean, I didn't not into Google into something else, <laughs> and that's where I got the photo. Uh, well, amazing that you're able to tell that so so quickly. And what are some of the other VW vehicles. Do you, do you ever get one of these? Oops, one of these. Oh, I almost brought that same one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe I should bring some props, but I was just <laughs> probably <laughs> several right on my table now. But uh, that's a micro bus, and that's one of the uh, first. This is uh, not a 29 window, but right. So they, they had them with little windows along the thing. They used to call them 29 window buses, yeah. and it was just a real rare model and uh, worth a lot of money. Now. A lot of really? fun to drive, too. And, but they're bigger. They big giant sunroofs and big. Yeah. I remember my dad had, uh, a friend of my dad's had a 64 when it was brand new, and we were driving down a dirt road in Bainbridge, and I was standing on the middle seat looking out the sunroof. That was back in 64, you know, when you could do things like that. I think the statute of limitations. <laughs> you did that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't I know it. So, <laughs> so you get, you get, uh, uh, Alex, please don't say anything. You get, there's the Golf. The Golf sort of re was supposed to replace the Beetle. Front wheel drive, very small. Yeah, they they call them Golf in Germany, but they call them Rabbits in the United States. There's not a lot of those. I see more of the old uh, Beetle than I, on the road than I do Golf. Oh, uh, oh, the Golf? Or Rabbits. Or oh, Rabbits. Yeah, yeah. 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 They just didn't last as long, or they didn't sell as much? Yeah, I don't think they sold as much. Yeah. The Beetles were sold for so long, and they all looked the same, even though they were all a little, little bit different than us, really. So, somebody wants to find your shop. Where is it? Uh, it's in uh, it's uh, it's in Streetsboro, right by the Turnpike, mm -hmm. um, uh, State Route 14, the 14 ends and turns into 40, 97, 96, State Route 14. Have you ever wondered how the man who drives a snowplow drives to the snowplow? This one drives a Volkswagen. So you can stop wondering.